As a photographer, you're working hard to manage your assets while struggling to stay abreast of the new camera and software technologies. Well, with CS5, you're going to get an integrated solution for managing and editing images, industry-leading raw processing and image quality, 64-bit on both the Mac and the PC platforms, and new mind-altering capabilities like HDR Pro and lens correction that give you increased fidelity and control and the ability to create surreal images. Here's a small sampling of the best new things in Photoshop CS5, which, by the way, is celebrating 20 years of innovation in 2010. Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. Most photographers I know are using a combination of Photoshop and Lightroom, but because today is all about the launch of CS5, I'm going to focus on just those features in Photoshop. We'll actually begin in MiniBridge, which is a new panel inside of Photoshop where I can navigate and access my files. In fact, let's start with the sequence of exposures. I'll select it, and then we can quickly hand that off to the new Merge to HDR Pro. Previous versions have offered support for high dynamic range imaging, but we realized that photographers wanted to make more creative adjustments. While in this version you can still make use of true HDR imaging, you can also use this comprehensive set of controls to convert your images to 16-bit. We can choose to emphasize our edges, we can adjust tones, we can even bring out detail and color. And when we're finished, we can save and share presets. Here we can compare the more natural looking image to a completely surreal version. But did you notice this overlapping area here on the left hand side where the trees were moving in between exposures? Now with a single click, I can remove that ghosting and you can choose which exposure you want Photoshop to pull the content from. Now, I know what you're thinking. You want to use the same powerful set of controls, but you only have a single image. Not to worry, in Photoshop CS5, we have created an adjustment with all of those same controls. In fact, they even share the same presets. Let's take a look at some other examples by selecting this range of images and tapping the space bar to enter full screen mode. As you can see, I've added some small adjustments to some images and some over-the-top enhancements to others. Let's talk about quality. In this release, we have made fundamental improvements in the way that we demosaic and sharpen images so that you can hold more information in the smallest detailed areas of your image. And not only that, we've also improved noise reduction. You can see here that I can remove the color noise of my image while still maintaining the saturation, and I can remove luminance noise while still maintaining detail and contrast. Now, while we allow you to remove noise that you don't want, we also give you the opportunity to add special effects, such as grain, if you wanted to mimic a traditional film effect, or if you were trying to match images to composite them together. We've also made improvements to the post-crop vignetting, including the ability to darken or lighten your image as if dodging or burning in the traditional darkroom. And we all want to save time while we're in Photoshop, right? So in this new release, we can automate lens correction. We're using the image file's EXIF data in order to automatically apply corrections based on the camera and the lens used. Not only do we correct for distortions, we're also correcting chromatic aberration as well as vignetting. And we'll be providing an online location so that you can share lens profiles if you're using a less common lens and camera combination. Now the feature that completely blew me away this release is the content aware fill. You can simply make a selection around the object that you want to remove and then intelligently fill it to remove it. It's amazing. I don't know what's going on under the hood, but this is going to save me time. But wait, there's more. Photoshop CS5 also has new natural media bristle tips so that you can make paintings from your photographs or you can paint from scratch. We can control bristle quality, such as the shape, the length, the density, and the stiffness of the brush. And for the first time ever, we can realistically blend color using the new Mixer Brush tool. We have control over the wetness of the base layer, the amount of paint loaded into the brush, and the mix of the paint. 
We can even define multiple colors on a single tip. And using a tablet and pen, we can control the brush's opacity, the pressure, the tip, even the barrel rotation. And I'm gonna sneak in one more feature. We have added Puppet Warp, which will allow me to simply drop pins on my images and then make natural distortions. And it doesn't end with what I've shown you today, but I'm out of time, so I hope you'll take advantage of the additional resources on adobe.com and Adobe TV.